Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's appraisal buzzcast. We've been getting a lot of feedback with our recent buzzcast, and we really appreciate that. Reach out to us at comments at appraisalbuzz.com if you want to give us your feedback directly. I'm Jim Morrison. With us today, we have Joan Trice, CEO and founder of Altera Group. We have one of our favorite interviews, Scott Reuter, Chief Appraiser at Freddie Mac. We're going to be discussing the new desktop policies and what it means for appraisers. Joan, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. And Jim, yes. And Scott, you, of course, are one of my favorites. Uh, favorites, period, not just favorite interview. And we seem to be having you a lot lately. So obviously, we got a lot of changes coming. So let's talk about the new desktop product that you and Fannie Mae are rolling out. And uh, of course, I'm reading all the social media, and that's why I had to pick up the phone and call you and say, let's put some of these um, myths, urban legends to bed and get some real intel out there. So, Scott, first question, what was the intent of the introduction of this desktop product? Good start. Good question, and I'm always glad to be with you. I think I think first and foremost, it's important. It's an important step forward for appraisal modernization, and we view it as more transitional over time to help bring efficiency to the process. And we're not really putting the burden of immediacy of all appraisal modernization on the shoulders of desktop. That may be, and that seems to be a lot of the prevailing conversation. I'm not on social maybe as much as you, but I'm hearing a lot of the same things and your outreach was timely. One, two, I think to help that view, you know, we had a product a spectrum slide at, and I think we debuted it at one of the expos where we had the landscape, the empty landscape between like waivers, ACE waivers for us in the 1004 Form 70 and nothing in between. And it was a backdrop. They have a lot of conversation about not only modernization and innovation, but the opportunity between those two products. So our view is that the entire spectrum is built out with options. And I think this was just a first step. And the intent was to help reduce and have an impact on efficiency and turn time, maybe eventually cost, but not to increase and introduce turn time concerns and additional costs. And I think that seems to be the key point that most are kind of wrestling with. Right. Okay. And then I think the other item that's confounded a few people is the requirement for a floor plan. You want to comment on that? I will comment on that. So I think the we, like you, are hearing a lot about the floor plan, you know, why a floor plan and why now? And I think the thinking was, since the appraiser is not going into the property, inside the property, a floor plan helps them understand not only the layout of the home, that would help them address any functional concerns, but I think almost more importantly, it allows the appraiser to better understand how the gross living area should be calculated and broken out. So between the above grade and below grade and just gaining a better understanding of the, the two-story loft at entry, where a lot of times that second floor area is included in the calculation and that type of thing. So I think that's, that's an important element. And I think we can also maybe eventually migrate to having a little greater accuracy through the use of technology as we go forward. And a lot of times measurements that we obtain, either from a county record or whatever, they can vary significantly from appraisal to appraisal. So I think introducing a floor plan that may be generated by technology, I think would go a long way to improving accuracy and cons consistency long-term of the data. Yeah, I agree. And that's a great place to take a break for commercial message and Scott, and then we'll be right back. We didn't build remote Val for appraisals. We built it for appraisers. With remote Val, you are in control. Unlike a hybrid valuation, you directly gather the information, photos, and measurements you need while communicating with the homeowner. But with no travel time, Remote Val increases the number of inspections you can perform. Combined with 24 hour pay and our exclusive benefits, it's no wonder more appraisers are choosing in center appraisal management. Remote Val is fast, easy to use, and completely free for appraisers. To see a demo of Remote Val in action, visit incenteram.com. So welcome back, Scott. And I just have a question about, did you, have some kind of similar product during COVID or didn't some of this emanate out of the COVID crisis? 
It did. That's a, that's a great point. And we did. <laughs> so for COVID, we introduced as part of the appraisal flexibilities with, you know, which, you know, a desktop option. And I think there are differences. So at the time, probably two years ago now, we were in a different environment. We stood up appraisal flexibilities in collaboration with our friends at Fannie Mae under the direction of FHFA, the flexibilities and the, uh, there were mitigating circumstances, I think, associated with the pandemic. So firstly, the temporary COVID flexibilities were just that. They were intended to be temporary. And we acknowledged that at the time that requirements for certain information verification might not be available. So that's probably the first distinct factor. To your point, we learned a lot from that. So, uh, and I think the appraisers in general really get high marks for the way they navigated the landscape, not just for GSE work. And we were pushing out our information and trying to be very clear about the requirements, but uh, also, you know, they, they don't just do GSE work. A lot of appraisers, you know, they do work for FHA, VA, USDA, they do private work. So I think they did a great job. We saw those reports come in and saw how appraisers handled it. We were able to judge the quality, the risk. And I think that was a, likely a component that helped influence our, our regulator to move in this direction. So here's where I think, again, you know, going back to the social media comments, here's where I think a lot of the confusion is coming from. And I just want your thoughts on this and not just social media, it's direct phone calls from a uh, collateral risk network members telling me that they're beefing up their uh, inspector vendor lists to get these floor plans done. And so there seems to be confusion about the old hybrid from the pilot days pre-pandemic with this new product. The confusion seems to be coming from the AMCs and the lenders who are driving on those requests. Your thoughts? I have a lot of thoughts, and I think you're you're onto something. And I think to the to the first point, I, th I think the the industry at large has has desired to fill in that barren landscape we talked about before. And I think during busy times, you know, the other slide I have that I we update all the time is the appraiser capacity and volume slide. And there's real pressure on appraisers. So I know that's felt across the spectrum. So as a way to help address that, I think there's been, you know, a view that you know, where's the modernization, where's the innovation? For us, it's easy to say, well, here's the first piece. To them, maybe they see a crack in the light in the door and they're just charging full bore ahead and saying, you know, desktop eligible is being, uh, is being perceived as desktop or else, you know, and that was not our intent. Desktop eligible didn't mean desktop mandatory. It meant if the information's there, here's the guideline, here are the requirements. They're a little bit different. They're a little bit similar. The appraisers can navigate this landscape. They've done it for, you know, a long time. And, but I think that's, I think you're right. I think that's where a lot of the disconnect and the confusion is coming. As a part of our ongoing dialogue with stakeholders across the industry, we talked to a lot of AMCs and we talked to a lot of lenders and AMC opinions seem to also be on a spectrum and vary. Some, to your point, are agonizing and stressing and working to determine how they can provide this because if they get that desktop eligible flag, it is going to be desktop or else in their view. And again, then there's at the other end of the spectrum, there are AMCs that say, yeah, we hear that and we hear that from a lot of our lenders. They want consistency. They would like to know that they can do this. They view it as a way to help with everything we've talked about. But the fact that it introduces another touch point, it introduces another cost, and it may impact turn time seems to them, and candidly seems to, like me, it seems counter to the whole spirit of the desktop appraisal. It's meant to be a step towards innovation, a step towards efficiency, and understanding, you know, we recognize that a lot of this information is not going to be available, but it's not, but it does exist. Some markets, it's more commonplace to include floor plans. Some property types, it's, you're more able to obtain maybe a builder floor plan if it's a somewhat newer home or something out of a promotion guide. You know, those are things that are acceptable for illustrating the, the layout and the design. So I, I guess tying all the way back to your question, I think that's most likely the, the 
the point of disconnect is we view it as a step in the direction. And I think the industry is saying, nope, we're going to, we're going to turn this desktop into a hybrid by their action. I don't think they mean to do that. You know, we still have hybrid in test and learn. I can't speak for our friends at Fannie Mae, but we're still piloting that. That's going to be very different. That's what we have a whole separate form. That's it. And all the concerns that the appraisers are having are addressed on that form because it is a different type of an assignment. This is a piece of information and that likely could be where a lot of this confusion and the disconnect is coming from. Uh, agreed. So I, I just want to reiterate what you just said, because I think it's really stunning. And the, and the message is not so much for appraisers, but for vendors and, and lenders. And that is your intent was not for AMCs to hire third parties to get that floor plan because, as you say, it might not be in the best interest of the borrower to have the appraisal cost plus the inspection cost. And then what are you saving a day or two, maybe? It, so it, it defeats the purpose of the desktop it, fast track. It does. It does. Yeah. And again, we didn't anticipate like crazy adoption on this because of that fact. Maybe a secondary point is a nudge for the industry on technology. And that's outside of the appraiser, the lender and the vendor space. It's more on the, on the MLS and the realtor space. And in the ongoing discussions we have with NAR as an example, I mean, they're, they're, they're great partners and they're very open to this and they realize it. And I think as you know, a nod to our realtor and agent friends, you know, they've been very early adopters of a lot of technology. And we had to kind of, take a moment the other day and pause and take even just a 30 year look back at MLS, Joan, right? As an example, you and I were maybe out in the field then and MLS has come a long way and I don't think appraisers are, had a hand in any of that evolution. You know, it used to be books with a grainy front photo and a little bit of information and look what it's gone to now when appraisers are, you know, out appraising, you can look a comp up online and you get a lot of information. You can scroll through the pictures. You can maybe take a virtual tour. You can, there's a lot you can do. And just think of a world if all that information now has a floor plan. So, you know, the, the other piece that typically confounds a practicing appraiser is trying to get that accurate square footage on the comp. You know, you haven't set foot in there. You measured the subject, but you, hit, you haven't really, you know, been able to ascertain whether that's real, what what the day include. You might might or might not have good county auditor information. So anyway, we view that that kind of fits into the, the longer term picture, right? That's the view that as this becomes more commonplace, as it becomes more of a best practice or a trend in the industry, that could really be, you know, the wind in the sail. And again, we have no delusion that that was going to be the case right out the gate. I understand. So uh, let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. The Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal 7th edition is a landmark text that reflects the depth and breadth of appraisal knowledge. Each entry, definition, and reference has been painstakingly researched and designed to reflect the expert understanding of issues that currently impact the profession. The new dictionary is an essential authoritative resource for all appraisers. To purchase, visit appraisalinstitute.org slash dictionary seven. All right, welcome back, Scott. You know, from a practical perspective, I think appraisers are a little stymied by how do they get information? Is there's nothing to prevent an appraiser from picking up the phone and calling the, the borrower, correct? Or, or let me back up a minute. Are these, is this product for refi and purchase? No, the eligibility is, is for purchase only. At this point. purchase only. Okay. So there would be a contract of sale. So can, can the appraiser then call the listing agent and get information on the property to, to verify? Yeah, I would say to the first point, you know, it was focusing on purchase transaction was strategic because the anticipation is with the amount of marketing information that's available online or through MLS systems that a lot of that information would be available to the appraiser. So I can't speculate now longer term outside of that space, but that was, that was the thought. And then I would say to the other point, you know, the requirements for putting together a desktop appraisal are, are not unlike collecting data and information across the board. So they're going to be able to source 
their photographs. They need to get a floor plan. With all the attention on floor plan, a lot of appraisers are forgetting the sketch showing the measurements and dimensions in a GLA calculation and all that information. And a part to the, your question was appraisers cannot assume conditions. So I don't think an outbound call to any party who can help confirm that and verify to the appraiser's satisfaction is, is a problem. You know, it's the appraisers who we want to put that power in their hands. They're the ones developing the report. And I think, I don't have the wording memorized, but I think consistent with USPAP, they can consider and develop anything they deem credible or reliable. So they're the, they're the, the buck stops there. They're the ones that, you know, if anything smells fishy, if they can't really get 100% confirmation, if the information's not there, if they don't have a source to verify, then the power is theirs to say, I don't have enough information. This needs to be upgraded to a full 1004 Form 70 appraisal. Now, I say that to say, sometimes I feel like that's easy for Freddie and the enterprises to say, <laughs> where you know we hear a lot of feedback from appraisers that say, yeah, it's easy for you guys to say that, but that doesn't work that easy in appraisal world and the in, in how assignments are, how assignments are, uh, you know, how we receive our assignments and, if we upgrade it, we might lose it and it might go to somebody else and there's pressure to complete it no matter what. And so that for that, those are things that we're trying to increase our appreciation of to understand how it plays out from a practical standpoint. But none of that was the intent with it. And, you know, again, the information should be obtainable and the appraiser should really go through the same process to collect, analyze and verify that information. Well, you already have received some of these back. Is that correct? So what, what are you seeing in some of the desktop appraisals that are coming across your desk? Yes, that's a great question. So we launched on uh, March 6th in advance of Fannie, and some are coming in just fine. And some are showing where appraisers are kind of getting tripped up. You know, they haven't done these yet. And uh, there, was, there was one we looked at yesterday where was a new home out west and uh, we got to the photo page Had a nice photo of the front of the property rear photo not available street scene not available so that's not acceptable and that is an example is not in compliance we actually called the appraiser nicest guy in the world and he was like oh I, you know this is the first one i did we said no, we understand we're not out busting kneecaps here we're just trying to remind people and get on forums like yours to make sure the message is out there. They read the FAQs, they read the good information we have out. Fanny has some great resources available too. So we're trying to really communicate what's required one. And two, as I said earlier, with all the focus on the floor plans, many are forgetting the other two components, the sketch and the, and the GLA calculation. And you know, from a practical matter, it's also okay to get these in combinations of a few things. So we saw one where it was a beautiful floor plan, one of the technologies has produced it, and it was the floor plan showing the layout. It had the dimensions and the measurements, and it had the calculations all, but all in one. Perfect. Now, turn the page. We understand in a real world, that's not always going to be available. We had another one where the appraiser appeared to use kind of a promotional floor plan when the home was brand new, had nothing other than the layout, and then was able to add a sketch with dimensions and GLA calculations. Also in full compliance. So how they do it, and if they need to do it in components, that's perfectly acceptable. But as a reminder, I guess that's back to your question, what we're seeing, that's kind of what we're seeing. And those seem to be the two areas that a lot of the early uh, appraisals seem to be getting tripped up. Well, would this not be an opportunity, Scott, for appraisers to reach out to their local realtor community and offer their services to do floor plans on their listings? So I would, I didn't think about that. I would love that, right? The voice of the appraiser. Back in the day, you and I talked about when we were in the field, I mean, having that relationship with that would you nurtured and kind of worked on all the time, I think that would be a part of the dialogue and whether you offer or just we'd go to a couple big uh, realtors in, in the area and, and visit them on the mornings they had their meetings and tours and just kind of interact with them. I mean, that would be a great place to say, look, by the way, you know, here's something that's not just coming, it's here, it's brand new and introduce it there. And yeah, I think is, and again, realtors are smart. I think as they realize this is not only an additional tool that can help the appraiser, I mean, think about it. It could be something that the buyers want. You know, my daughter bought a home recently and the, the thing that she liked the home and her and her fiance are excited, 
but they liked the fact that there was like a 3D scan tour that you could, you know, twirl around with your finger on the iPad and stuff and place furniture. And we saw that a million times, but it was, but the point is, so is buyers, that's maybe one more thing that the buyers may like, and they, the realtors may perceive as, as kind of a marketing edge, but it could also be that really valuable piece of information for the appraiser too. So I think that's, that's an important part of it. Yeah. To your point, whatever, whatever the appraisers can do to help evangelize for this, I'd be on board. Yeah, no, I think that makes perfect sense. Well, Scott, thank you again for joining us today and busting some of those desktop myths. And we're going to have you back, I'm sure, real soon. Please do. And, and I will make available to you offline just, you know, again, our the resources we have out there that you can socialize on your, your platforms and make sure that the appraisers know that, you know, there's that there are resources there that can help guide them through this. Fantastic. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Looking for better turn times, the ability to automate routine tasks and stay in compliance with your appraisal management processes? Evo state-of-the-art appraisal management technology for residential and commercial real estate lenders and AMCs was built with the user in mind. Evo streamlines the appraisal experience with configurable workflow design that automates 100% of routine tasks, alerts you along the way, and gives you powerful reports to make timely decisions. It's the only platform in the market with total customizations out of the box without IT development. Find out more at globaldms.com or call 877-866-2747. Thanks so much, Joan and Scott. As Joan said, it's great to be able to get this feedback straight from you, all the stuff that we're hearing on social media, and to be able to put this information out there for appraisers so they know how to do this new style. So we also appreciate our sponsors for helping us with their support. And thanks for all of our listeners. Thanks and having a great day.